Hi friends. You have all the world's knowledge at your thing fingertips. And what are you doing with it? I was just doing my gratitude journaling, which I do every day. For the past week or so since I was listening to Brene Brown's audio program, The Power of Vulnerability. And I find it interesting how quickly my mind can go from stress and fear to excitement and energy. And it's really powerful because before I did this five minutes ago, I was feeling like, oh, I don't want to do this vlog. I don't have anything to talk about. And, and suddenly while I was writing that, all these ideas came into my head. It's, I think that's, you know, incredible how fast the human mind can change track and do something different um, from one moment of stress to another moment of, of happiness. That's, that's amazing. And, and what, what, what I was thinking about, one of the ideas I had was, was also amazing is how much access we have to, to information. I mean, I'm sitting in front of my laptop. I'm connected to the internet. I have access to so much information. I have, I have access to more information than all humans had combined 100 years ago. I mean, think about that for a second. We are living in such an abundant such an abundant age we have so much just really literally at our fingertips and we have to just ask ourselves like what are we doing with it like are we making the most of what we have are we being the most generous the most compassionate the most wise what are we doing and uh, i don't know I, don't, I think there's i think there's a revolution coming i think things are changing so fast and not just technology, but also our consciousness. I think so many people are waking up and realizing that um, compet competition, uh, greed, selfishness, these things are just have no, no, nothing of value to give us. You know, that, that, that whatever, you know, material gains we, we create for ourselves, if we're, they're not shared, if they're not given to other people, if, if we don't, really, if we don't share what we have, then we suffer. We suffer instead of um, benefiting from our own gains. I think, I think people are waking up to that fact. And that is profoundly calming and And, and settling. It's very comfortable to know that. I want to share one other thing, which is something I thought about today, which is I watched a talk, a TED talk, um, about the coming super intelligence and how it's so important that we solve this problem of control. That if, if it's super intelligence, if we create machine super intelligence, you know, we lose control. So how do we maintain, you know, how do we build our values into the machine? And then I was watching another um, a documentary where a programmer, a, a, somebody that, a Google product manager, was saying that if you think about it, you know, we already have collective intelligence. The system of us and the internet and the interconnections that creates is creating something larger than ourselves. I mean, it goes back to kind of Gaia theory, you know, like. When you think about the world as a whole, it has a, an intelligence, not the kind of intelligence that you and me have, but it has a deeper systemic wisdom. The earth has so many self-balancing systems. It's easy to conceive of that as being intelligence in some way. And so, of course, the interconnection of human beings creates also a collective intelligence. And our technology is increasing that intelligence by creating, making the connections between us shorter. Think about that, that, that is literally true. When we uh, used to, if I, I'm sitting here in Germany, 
a hundred years ago for me to send a message to California would have taken weeks and weeks of, of a of a of a written note passing over the oceans to get there. And today I can talk at my laptop, have a microcomputer, a microprocessor, gather all the visual inputs, all the photons flying into this camera, process them, upload them to the internet, fly them throughout the internet through a bunch of satellites and cables, um, and then recreate them in, in audio and visual form for you to see just moments later. That is incredible. It's shortening the distance between you and me so much that real collective intelligence is becoming possible. If that gap is reduced even further, if not just if if it becomes easy for us to not just have a conversation by video, but by holographic virtual reality, which is coming. Those headsets are coming, but what's coming even more is um, true holographic communication. There's a company in Florida working on this magically. They have a billion dollars of funding, and they're making this happen. Then, and that's like, that's going to happen very soon. You know, in, in in ten years, in five years, maybe you and I will be talking through holographic medium, where we will believe that we're sitting next to each other because it'll be so real. When those gaps keep being shortened and when we start to communicate, maybe even directly with our brainwaves, then we stop being individual consciousnesses locked in our own minds and become part of a collective intelligence. What do you think? Is that crazy? Let me know what you think. And that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao.